This video is a part two. If you haven't seen part one, the link is in the description. To continue, lysosomes are membranous sacs of hydrolytic enzymes that the cell uses to digest macromolecules. When a cell carries out phagocytosis, or the process of engulfing a smaller organism, lysosomes break the consumed organism down and pass its nutrients into the cytosol. Additionally, Lysosomes break down the cell's own defunct organelles into usable nutrients in a process called autophagy. Autophagy allows a cell to constantly renew itself. Facules are the storage modules of the cell. Produced by the endoplasmic reticulum, they are massive vesicles that are designed to hold anything from hydrolytic enzymes to poisonous compounds. Food vacuoles form as a result of phagocytosis. The devoured organism is stored inside a food vacuole before being digested by lysosomes. Many freshwater protists have contractile vacuoles, or vacuoles that pump excess water out of the cell in order to maintain a suitable ion concentration. Plant cells usually have a massive central vacuole that stores a sap full of inorganic ions such as potassium and chloride. Moving on, let's talk about mitochondria and chloroplasts the organelles responsible for transforming energy into different forms. Mitochondria convert stored energy in the form of sugars and fats into ATP, a molecule that the cell can harness energy from directly. This process is called cellular respiration. The mitochondrion is enclosed by two membranes, with a smooth outer membrane and a convoluted folded inner membrane. These folds in the inner membrane are called cristae, these membranes divide the mitochondria into two compartments, the intermembrane space and the mitochondrial matrix. The matrix holds mitochondrial DNA, along with enzymes that catalyze some of the steps of cellular respiration. Other proteins, such as the enzyme that synthesizes ATP, are built into the inner membrane. As a highly folded membrane, it has a larger surface area, which enhances its productivity. On the other hand, chloroplasts convert solar energy and other inorganic compounds into sugars. This process is called photosynthesis. Inside the chloroplasts are pancake-like membranous sacs called thylakoids. These sacs are stacked in stacks we refer to as granum. The empty space between the grana and the boundary of the chloroplast is referred to as the stroma. Chloroplasts are found exclusively in plant cells, and its green pigment chlorophyll gives plants their characteristic green color. Respiration and photosynthesis are both super complicated, and they'll be addressed again in a future video. The cytoskeleton is a network of fibers extending throughout the cytoplasm that organizes and supports the structures of the cell. It is composed of three different types of molecular structures, microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. Microtubules are hollow tubes, composed of a protein called tubulin. They act like a conveyor belt for the cell, guiding transport vesicles to their destinations. They also assist in cell division. Microfilaments are solid rods built from two intertwining strands of actin. A network of microfilaments within the plasma membrane support its shape and help to resist pulling forces on the cell. Finally, intermediate filaments are more permanent fixers of the cell. Even after cell death, intermediate filament networks persist. They also make up the nuclear lamina that supports the nuclear envelope. Now, let's talk about external cellular structures. In plant cells, a thick wall made up of cellulose surrounds the plasma membrane, protecting the cell, helping it maintain its shape, and preventing excessive uptake of water. Although animal cells don't have these walls, they do possess an elaborate extracellular matrix, or ECM for short. The most abundant ingredient in animal ECMs is collagen, which forms a web of strong fibers outside the cell. These fibers are embedded in a network of proteoglycan molecules, or proteins that are heavily saturated with carbohydrate chains. The ECM is bound to the plasma membrane at membrane proteins called integrins. Oftentimes, cells will communicate with each other via sites of direct physical contact. These sites are called cell junctions. In plant cells, cell walls of neighboring cells are perforated with plasmodesmata, channels that directly connect the cytoplasm of two distinct cells. Depending on the circumstance, anything from small solutes to RNA can pass through these channels. 
In a similar fashion, gap junctions in animal cells create cytoplasmic channels between two distinct cells. Today, we covered a lot. I definitely missed some information, but I tried to cover as much as I could. Please email me if you have any questions, and I will see you next time.